What's up everybody and welcome back to, I don't even know what to call this. So this is episode three of this little series that we're doing on the RR Buildings channel and it all is centered around tools. I love tools. That is what really got me into actually posting a lot on social media is I like to talk about tools. So I wanted to do a more in-depth video series talking about those tools, whether that is an unboxing, so opening up a brand new tool that I just got, or talking about a tool or tools that I've had for a long time and my real thoughts on what they've done to me or done for me on the job site. And sometimes I'm just gonna literally talk to you guys about the tools I'm using, not even really comparing them to other brands or doing any tool fights or anything like that, just more or less, this is what I use, this is why I like it. And that's what today's video is all about. So let's get into it. Okay, today guys, we are talking about drills and more importantly, the drills that I use every day on my job site, what they are, what I use them for, and kind of my insight as to why I use them. The first drill I'm gonna use is the Milwaukee Fuel Brushless. It's got the one key and I typically use this for general framing or for large fasteners. This is model number 2757. The second two drills that I typically use on site are both hydraulic drivers. And the reason I am featuring both of these is because I really don't have a favorite one way or the other. I definitely have a lot more Milwaukee red tools, which means I have a lot more batteries, so I could use this a lot more, but I do love the Makita oil impulse. And what I use these drills for are smaller fasteners where I'm in a tight space and I don't want it to be so loud. And I also use this for a lot of like fine detail trim work. So if I'm trying to place a piece of trim or a steel panel, these are what I'm gonna grab for that application. The final drill that I'm gonna talk about is always a lot of controversy. People always assume that this is a drywall gun because it does look a lot like a lot of the cordless drywall guns on the market. However, this is specifically for metal to wood fasteners or like a deck screw. So it only runs at 2,500 RPM max versus a lot of the drywall guns are gonna run up to like 4,000 RPM, which is really too fast for the application that I'm using it for, which is a metal to wood, think roofing screw or sidewall screw. So why do I have all these different impact guns, screw guns, when typically you could probably do everything that I need to with one of them? Well, because I think they all have their strengths, their weaknesses, and I always try to get the best tool for the job, even if that means that you gotta buy multiple tools or multiple brands. First off, we've got the fuel, and I talked about it. We use this a lot of the times for general framing, larger fasteners, and that's because it has a lot higher torque rating and it's made for that. This is what a lot of people are gonna buy as a general impact. So this is something that would be like an all around. I would say that if you had to buy one screw gun, you probably were gonna buy this if you were a homeowner because it is going to do everything pretty good. However, if you want to kind of break it down and get a more specific tool, the hydraulic drivers, if you're working in, let's say, duct work, you're working in closets, in cabinets, you guys all know how loud an impact driver is. Well, the hydraulic drivers, they fix a lot of that noise, they bring the decibel level down below 80, which is gonna be the OSHA requirement for hearing protection, and they really do a great job reducing the vibration, and that is all because of the hydraulics inside versus a typical mechanical impact driver. However, there are downsides to using a hydraulic driver. The torque is not as great and I've also noticed through using these drills that if I'm working outside long periods of time in the summer, they actually slow down, they get louder, and they vibrate a lot more. And that is because the viscosity of the hydraulic oil inside, it starts to thin out over a lot of use, and that is where you lose that real power from the hydraulics. So just a side note, these are not meant, these hydraulic drivers are not meant for extended use, 
heavy duty use. So that is where you go back to the standard driver. This isn't gonna wear out the same. I'm not trying to say that these will wear out, but they will overheat and you will lose a lot of the benefit of this driver if you continuously use it in a, in a really heavy duty application. So the final drill we're gonna talk about is the Makita. And this is a brushless drill. It's uh, model number XSF05. And I'm telling you that because I always get the comments. Every time I feature this on social media or anywhere, people are like, that's a drywall gun. No, it is not a drywall gun. It looks like it, it works like it, but it's made specifically for a metal to wood fastener, a tech screw, maybe a deck screw. It's at 2,500 RPM max versus a drywall screw gun is gonna be a lot higher RPM, probably closer to like 4,000. And when I use that drywall gun on a metal to wood fastener, it's too fast. It almost just burns the screw into the metal versus this one is the appropriate RPM to work efficiently. Now, a couple features about this drill that I really love. You don't even have to hold on to the trigger. You've got a trigger lock and this gun is on right now, but you don't even hear it because it's waiting. It has a push drive technology. So once you see that, once you push the bit in, that's when it starts the motor. It really increases the amount of runtime that you have with a battery because it's not running until you've pushed the bit in or pushed the fastener into the material. You can, however, turn that off with this button here and that will allow you to pull the trigger. So some people maybe want that control. I like to just turn it on and as I'm going and I'm screwing a roof off or I'm screwing some side steel off, it's always available. I put the screw in and I just push it in. And so it's also got a really nice ergonomic handle and a lot of you might not be doing 80 square of metal roofing in one day, but when you do have to do that, ergonomics, comfort, all those things really matter and Makita really nailed it on this design because it's comfortable to use. The Versa clutch from DeWalt is really long and I don't have it here to show you guys, but it's, it's a lot more awkward than this gun. So that's why I typically use the Makita instead of the DeWalt Versa clutch. One thing I did wanna point out is the reason we use this drill over an impact as much as we can when we're fastening those painted fasteners is it does a lot less damage to the paint on the fastener. So something to consider if you're doing a lot of that type of work, this is gonna be a lot better for the paint on the fastener. Now there's one other gun that I'm not showing you guys today that I use all the time. And if you follow me on social media, you've seen me use it. And that is the Hitachi Triple Hammer. Probably the strongest, best all around drill that I use, but it's really loud. It's not the best for doing a uh, painted fastener or really that detailed work, but it is a workhorse. And Hitachi has got a brand new line of battery systems or battery power coming out. It's their multi-volt line. It's a 36 volt. And I really hope to have that new uh, drill to show you guys very shortly in the next couple weeks. So look for that. That's why I decided not to talk about it today, but I do use it a lot. All right, I know I just threw a ton of information, a ton of details right at you, but let's get into some of the demos and show you guys what I'm talking about. So here we got the drills and the type of fasteners that I typically will use with that drill. Uh, starting with the impact from Milwaukee, a typical framing screw, so like a three inch framing screw up to maybe a structural fastener, like this is a GRK six inch fastener, and this drill is gonna have no problem all day putting that in. When I come over here to the hydraulic drivers, I'm still gonna use them occasionally for a framing screw, especially if I'm just framing in like a window or a door, something real quick. Um, I don't wanna use these all day framing. They will overheat and they will degrade over time and they'll get louder and all those things that make the hydraulic drivers awesome you kind of lose that. So really that's about it. And we'll also use them to place a lot of screws in some trims. When you get over to the Makita, this really only has a small amount of uses. We bring it out whenever we're screwing off a roof or we're screwing off the side walls. And we're typically just going to be using it for a quarter inch metal to wood screw. But it's also really good if you're just trying to fasten a lot of screws in a repetitive motion like a deck. So the first demo I wanna do is I'm gonna show you the difference in noise between the standard impact and an oil or a hydraulic driver. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and set up just a regular three and a quarter, three and a quarter framing screw. Uh, we'll go ahead and use the Makita just so we get a little bit of color difference. 
Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and alternate the screwing and hopefully you can hear on the mic, it'll pick up the difference in noise because in person, it is a game changer in noise. First, the uh, Milwaukee. Now the Makita. So I don't know if that picked up exactly. I won't know until I review the footage, but in person, it is night and day difference in sound. The next thing I wanted to show about these two drills is the vibration. And I know it's gonna be really hard to show, but I'm gonna put another screw in. I'm gonna get a close-up shot and hopefully show you the difference in vibration uh, and overall smoothness in the driver. So first I'm gonna go ahead and put the Makita, or I'm gonna go ahead and put the Milwaukee screw in. Next, I'll go ahead and drive a screw with the Makita. Now, I don't know if you can once again see this. It's one of these things that you really have to almost do in order to appreciate, but I can promise you when using an oil driver versus the standard mechanical impact, it is not only quieter, but it is way less vibration and a lot smoother to use in your hands. All right, the next thing I wanted to show was not everybody's gonna need to put a six inch structural screw in, but we do have to do it sometimes. And this is gonna be my go-to when I have to do that, either this or that triple hammer. Um, even though the surge will work, I'll show you the difference in speed. So, the surge can definitely do the job, and if you're not gonna do a ton of them, it's fine, but if you're doing this a lot repetitively, that couple seconds does add up. Now let's move on to uh, the other types of fasteners I use these drills for. The other thing that we do a lot of on site is we do a lot of metal to wood connection. We're using these quarter inch, usually inch and a half screws, and this does not require a really strong drill, but it does get old when you've got a lot of vibration all day on your hands, adding to carpal tunnel and other you know just physical ailments on the job site over time and that is where I love a hydraulic driver or the Makita 2500 rpm screw gun I only use a driver like this if I'm going to be doing a quick placement of a trim or just a quick install and I'm gonna pull this guy out when I'm doing a lot of repetitive fasteners like up on a roof now the next thing we do a lot of on site is fastening metal to wood and I love the oil impulse drivers for that real quick you know maybe trim detail placement or something where you want some fine placement so it's it's nice because there's not a lot of vibration <laughs> So it kind of goes right in, okay? But what I really wanted to show also was once we set the steel where we want it, that's where this drill comes into place. You just saw me put a screw in with the Surge. Now watch me put a screw in with the Makita screw gun. So it's louder, but it's really quick. And what I really want to point out is that when using an impact driver to put in a painted fastener, look at the difference in the way the screw looks after you've installed it. So you can really notice here, hopefully, that this fastener is a lot more white versus this fastener has some paint taken off. And that's because as the drill is impacting it down, it's going to chip some of that paint off. Also notice the washer, the way it's set. This one is set perfectly because I've already adjusted the shoe on the Makita versus the Milwaukee. You have to just do it off of feel. So hopefully this little review of what we use for drills on site was helpful to you guys if you're looking for that next drill to buy. Um, there's really no good answer to the one drill that does everything perfect because nobody makes the right tool that does everything. So sometimes you gotta branch out in brands, in colors, and in just drills all together that are gonna serve their purpose for the specific task. Whenever we're doing screwing of a roof or a side steel, we're always gonna grab this gun because it's gonna be the most consistent, it's gonna look the best, it's gonna be the fastest. Overall, does the best job for that. If we're doing a lot of fine screw placement, if we're doing some smaller fasteners, some wood-to-wood -wood fasteners, some framing, 
we'll grab one of the hydraulic drivers because it's just a lot more comfortable to use. But if we're doing some really heavy duty applications, we're always going to go ahead and grab the standard impact, the 2757 from Milwaukee or the triple hammer that I will be showing you guys the updated version very shortly. But like always, drop me down a comment below and let me know what drill you're using. Let me know if there's a drill that I should be trying that is better than one of these because I know you guys have got your opinions too. This is only my opinion and yeah, there's a lot of red, a lot of blue. I do use a DeWalt drill once in a while. It's really good for framing. I don't have the model number. I use the triple hammer. I use whatever. Um, I've got a ton of them and I can't really always pick just one favorite. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully if you guys like this content, if you like this video, and if you want to see more about the tools I use or the tools I get, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get the notification when the video goes live, and I'll see you guys next week on Tool Whatever Tuesday. Hold on, wait a second. The other thing I want to tell you guys is that if you guys want to go out and buy one of these drills, uh, I'm going to drop a couple links down below to my Amazon affiliate account. I don't have a Patreon. Um, it's not like this is big money, but it is appreciated and it is you know, supportive and helps me continue this venture. So if you use one of those links, I do get a kickback. Uh, and I would love for you to go out, buy one of these drills if it's going to help you and let me know. It doesn't have to be in the comment, you can DM me, but let me know if it did help you, if it was a good purchase, or if it was a horrible one. I wanna know that too. Feedback is always appreciated. So we'll catch you guys next time.